Morning. Morning. Hi. 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 How's he? Fine. Champion. Hi. Hi. How's uh, how's lockdown going? Youngins today don't know that born. Hi. They've got it easy. Hi. When I were a lad. We had a dinner party every week. Ah. And our guests would come into the house happily. That's nout. We had dinner parties twice a week on Wednesdays and Fridays. Lots of guests all inside our house for a whole evening. That's nothing. We had five dinner parties every week. And often the guests wouldn't even leave. They'd stay the whole week. Five? Aye. That's nothing. We had a dinner party every night and we'd shake hands with everyone when they arrived and when they left. <laughs> shake their hands? Aye. Pathetic. We'd give them all hugs. Hugs? Aye. Boring. We had dinner parties every day of the week and we'd greet our guests with hugs and shakes and kisses. Well, I say hugs, but that were only on the driveway. Once they were in, we'd snog them, all of them. Snog? Aye. That's nout. We'd snog before the starter. With tongues? With tongues? Ah, with tongues. Then after starter, we'd all go to conservatory for an orgy. That's nout. Right. We had dinner parties all day, every day. Four plate with everyone on the driveway. Missionary position during starter, mash orgy after main meal, then swap car keys after dessert. Bodies mingling recklessly. Aye. 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 And you try telling that to today's lockdown kids and they won't believe you. This Country is a documentary TV programme showing the real lives of the real people in the real countryside. Tell us what you want to say thanks to them. Basically, yeah, because, like, fair play to just go on national TV and just tell it like it is, because, like, people talk shit about you and think they know you and they don't know shit, mate, like, so just fair play for standing up and saying whatever, because, like, people think they know me and they can judge me, say shit about me sleeping around when I was a when I literally never slept with anyone the whole time we were together, because Dan was the day after me and I split up. Ryan was the week after that, Stacey's party, and then I got a free nodge later that night. Neil Boise Porkchop were weeks after that. Pierce Mine only got fingered by. And yeah, admittedly, that was when me and Sai were still together, but I was completely paralytic on white lightning, so obviously you don't count. So if you're going to stand there and chat shit, get your facts straight. You know, like, people talking about my mum having four different kids with five different men and whatever they're saying, like, I have taken all the shit, a small village mindset I could take in my life and, like, literally walk through the tunnel of crap and still come out the other side smelling the flower so like f you do you know what i mean like i know hardship i know hardship so just fair play to you for just standing up and just saying true to yourself like mate i'll shake your hand if i could because you're representing people like me who grew up having it hard 
like hard mate like no one like n no one in the country of uk knew how hard it is until you showed it to them and i am literally so grateful for that because like i grew up with nothing like you'd watch his dinners as a kid and just finish a show in tears not because phil mitchell was shot but, but just highlighted what i did not have like no calf no supermarket just the local village shop that closes at nine no kebabby no fish and chip shop definitely no street market where everyone's all like oh right mate and how's your day and like there's a real sense of community and everyone's got you back or whatever like nothing like that i i literally had nothing one pub one disco a month in the village hall where they all got funny me last month anyway for puking in the toilets like hello where would you rather i do it all over the speakers again like there's so many politics it is boring <laughs> It is so boring mate, so yeah, I just wanna oh, oh like basically too, like not being funny, but your show is like hell of a funny too. Like I was saying to my dad, like I was like, oh yeah, this is show is like hell of funny because it's like well good because it's well like our lives in places and like and I was I was telling about the one where oh my god, what was it in the beginning where you're like trying to do that thing and, and you're like oh no, no no i can't remember it all but i was saying to my dad like oh you gotta definitely watch it like and he was all like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i don't really listen to like and then he came up to me the next day and it was like that oh that show was hell of a funny and then i was and, and, then, and then he was all like oh yeah you should definitely go on there and i was all like that but yeah, he was like, no, 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 you should go on there, like, you'd be the star of the show. And I was like, this. <sighs> like, he was like, still saying it anyway, like, no, 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 you'd be classic on there. Like, to be fair, he did make the point that there's no one on there, like, really representing, like, the entrepreneur. <sighs> the entrepreneurial side of things. Because, like, I do nails and beauty from the back of my dad's shed, and, like, I know you want to show the good and the bad of the country life. So like, if you want to show, you can have it hard, but still come out the other side, just, you know, w w however you think I could help or represent, like I am there. So get in touch, like, yeah, that'd be cool. I also write lyrics and spit rhymes too. You wanna get in my face talking jealousy and hate? Well, tell me what you know about my life, mate. They're nice to your face and they stab you in the back. Oh, mate, there's no need to be such a fucking twat. Are you gonna tell me about your fights with Stacey, are you? No. Everyone knows it all anyway, so there's no point trying to deny it. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice one, Stacey. Yeah, 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 Wow, mate, like, I ain't even got time for this. There's so many things I could do in my life right now. Like, I'm not even gonna bother with it. It's just at maturity, do you know what I mean? I'm not even gonna rise to it. How would you even know how I'm shagged? Oh, cos I told you, is it? Yeah. What, say, Percy, say they got rhino horn stuck up his nose. He did get a rhino horn stuck up his nose. What? About telling him about your undefeated since 2013 Zodi Chicken Contest title. Yeah, I'll just tell them about it when they get in touch.
That's quite an assertion, your opening statement. Should a nation decide to reduce the world's population for whatever reason, the only questions remaining are who to cull and how to cull them. That's quite an assertion. Do you? You don't think there are further questions to be considered before wading in with your flamethrower or your smorgasbord of genetically engineered bugs? Like, how do we cover up what we're doing? Can we just deny it? Can we explain it? Convince others it's the right thing to do? Or perhaps increasingly likely, can we rely on the rest of the world to look the other way? I'm sure there are more. But all equally important, wouldn't you agree? You would need at least the semblance of a strategy in place before embarking on such a an enterprise. I have no problem with the assertion per se. No, of course, we know it happens. It's ongoing, wouldn't you agree? Indeed. But I take exception at your first port of call for evidence. The Nazis are too obvious, too emotive, too simple too easy to dismiss as Zionist propaganda. I might even turn the tables there. I might. But not if I wanted my thesis to see the light of day. Don't be naive, you know exactly what I mean. Why? I don't have to explain myself. It's not my article, remember. Why not start with the Chinese? So much more discreet and restrained. The culling of the unborn. One child per couple. A siblingless society. Huge implications. No actual deaths. Well, that is to say deaths on record. The Brits. Oh, yeah, of course. You couldn't do this without including the Brits. Oh, good Lord, no, I'm not saying they started it. You'd have to go back much further than that. The the Acadians, or the Hittites, possibly. Perhaps even Homo sapiens emerging as the dominant primate over the Neanderthals. Although we're now urged to believe they were capable of far more harmonious relationships than we've ever been able to achieve with our rivals. Yeah. Of course, the genocide against the Aboriginal people of Australia and North America, of course. Good for context, but well documented. The world's been turning a blind eye to both for years. Ditto, for the most part, the Palestinians and the Kurds. Old news. Tired news. Bombs and guns. The weapons, at least, of conventional warfare. Not at all sexy. Sexy will get you noticed. That is, if you want to get noticed. Sexy will get you read. Even scientists like sexy. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, Uncle Sam, I'm sure, could furnish you with some more creative contemporary examples. That may be so. I'm not sure I'd want to comment on that one. Nor am I sure you should mention it, especially on an open connection. (sighs) Whatever gave you that idea, nothing is safe. But for the record, the snail is safest. Seal the envelope, stick a stamp on it and post it. Whatever's in it should quietly pass under the radar, unseen and unread by others. Unless, of course, you're already under surveillance. In which case, in which case, don't say anything to anybody, ever. But you're fine for the moment. Trust me. No problem, my fault. I probably led you on. Look, I'd simply say, remember the Okinawans. Right, I thought you might. It's an interesting example, isn't it? Relocate a proportion of an island's population to a country on the other side of the world and let the naturally occurring bugs and viruses do the job. 
simple. Their immune systems didn't stand a chance. Ah, good. And I think you should mention the conquistadors. The impact of old world diseases on the Native American population, not least because it belies any attempt to excuse what happened to the Okinawans. Ignorance was not a factor. They knew exactly what would happen, or at least they should have done. Which brings us to your central theme, the origin of latter day pandemics, bushmeat or lab, consumed or engineered. What do you think, percentage-wise? Chimpanzee, pig, bird, bat, camel, or petri dish? Mm, 60, 40, as low as that. I go higher. In this particular instance, I'd say 90, 10. Well, think about it. For a virus to jump from a bat, say to a human, generally requires an intermediate animal, like a pangolin. You'd have to spend an awful lot of time hanging around with bats exchanging bodily fluids to be directly infected. So when we're told the origin of the virus was a bat, we're right, in my opinion, to assume the passaging process that would naturally occur in the pangolin has actually taken place in the lab. Oh, it's perfectly innocent. It's part of a worldwide programme to predict the course of pandemics and protect us from them. Except that, and you know what I'm about to say, to date, far from predicting and protecting us, all they have done is create viruses that didn't previously exist in man and allow them to escape. No, no, it's not. There's no malice of forethought here. This isn't one for your who to cull and how to cull them scenario. This is just human error. People overworked, overstretched, overtired, making cock-ups. Simple mistakes. Huge ramifications. Right, it happens all the time. Anthrax bacterium distributed to 200 laboratories worldwide by the US Defence Department. A SARS outbreak in a Chinese lab in 2004. In both cases, the pathogens assumed to be inactive. Here in the UK, a malfunctioning waste disposal unit leaking into a watercourse from which neighbouring cattle drank, causing the foot and mouth outbreak, outbreak of 2007. See, what's more worrying is the number of escapes we don't hear about. No, no, again, there's no malice, there's no cover-up. We just don't know they've happened. Yet. I wouldn't go that far. It's unlikely any high security lab will ever admit responsibility for the escape of a pathogen that leads to a pandemic. Well, think about it. Where does the money come from to fund a worldwide research programme on such a scale? Indeed, pretty much every player in the global public health community would be implicated, including the World Health Organization. Oh, one other thing, in terms of hitting the right buttons to ignite public opinion. If, as I believe you wanted to suggest previously, these pathogens were being created and leaked deliberately in an attempt to cull or cull sections of the human population, that would be shocking. But think how much more shocking it would be if a pathogen with the potential to wipe out let's say, the entire human population, I mean, why not? If a virus with that potential doesn't already exist, then one day it almost certainly will. Imagine this virus is created in a lab and escapes because someone is tired and neglects to observe proper protocols. They, they transfer a latex glove from one area to another. They forget to change their shoes. They, oh, they whatever, they, they fail to wash their hands. Now, bear with me. There are still millions of people in this world who would support the idea of nuclear conflict if it was for a cause they believe in, to defeat communism or whatever. But for nothing, to risk wiping out the whole of human endeavour and history and culture in the cause of human error. Human error. 
can't imagine anyone signing up for that, can you? So why then, when this worldwide programme of research has so far failed to predict and protect us from any pandemic, but has created and exposed us to quite a few, difficult to say how many exactly, why is that allowed to continue? Why would anyone want to continue that? That's your story. Me? No, you know me. Strictly back room. I never believe a word I say. They will go for you, you know. You prepared for that. They'll write your ideas off as conspiracy theory and put your photo in the papers and on media platforms next to images of David Icke. Quickest way to shut down alternative views and silence dissent, those two words, conspiracy theory. Are you ready for that? Then there really is nothing else to say. I'd rather you didn't. Like I said, strictly back room, out of sight, undercover. Good luck. Goodbye.